Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and today is Wednesday, August 17th, 2016. This will be a quick market overview, uh, really touching on a lot of what I've been highlighting recently. Uh, although that we have had a few uh, recent developments on you know, the, the chart patterns, the trend lines, the levels that I've been watching. So that's why I wanted to do this video, uh, point those, those changes uh, that we've had out. Uh, I'll make mention before we get into the charts here. Today uh, at 2 o'clock Eastern Time, they're expecting to announce the FOMC minutes. Uh, those are the notes from the last meeting. Uh, I don't expect any fireworks from this one. I don't think it'll be a big deal. But typically the market will trade. The trading will be somewhat muted and low volume, uh, usually until those minutes come out because who wants to position right in front of the FOMC meeting uh, minutes if if they said something, if there's something market moving. But again, I don't think, uh, nor do I think there's an expectation that uh, we're going to see any fireworks today. But with that being said, there's usually uh, a little bit of volatility, rips or dips right after those minutes. Not as much as on, on an uh, FOMC announcement day when they make the decision whether to raise or hold hike or hold rates study or lower rates. But uh, we'll see. Just pointed that out. I just wanted to point that out. Now into the charts. Let's look at, we'll start here with the 60-minute charts. Uh, that's really where I've been focusing a lot on lately. Uh, story has been the same. We just continue to move higher and higher and higher, a slow and steady grind, and almost an unnatural uh, grind higher. By unnatural, I mean just an extremely tight trading range, very low intraday swings. So it keeps the VIX low, volatility is low. Uh, I, you know, I've seen this movie before. I've... You know, I've mentioned that on the site, and I'll show you something on the daily charts in a second here. Some 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 uncanny parallels uh, to a previous move we had uh, like this, and and how that ended. But uh, anyways, here's what we're looking at: 60-minute charts. We continue as we push higher uh, to diverge. In other words, the MACD, every every just about every indicator and oscillator uh, is making continues to make lower highs while prices make higher highs that's negative divergence and I, you know i know I, I i hear the comments in the trading room i i know there's a lot of um even some that outright just don't believe technicals work or don't work anymore uh all i can say is i, I guys i've been trading for for many years and um you know as i often say nothing is a hundred percent in trading you know technical analysis is not an exact science engineering is an exact science Medicine is not an exact science. Neither is technical analysis. So, you know, we don't, it can't guarantee uh, that these divergences play out. But I can tell you much, much more often than not they do. And until and unless they're, they're negated or taken out. In other words, we come on, the prices push, maybe we go sideways for a while without a pullback and then punch up higher. And each of these 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 indicators and momentum and, and price indicators and oscillators down here, they go on, they make higher highs. That divergence is then negated. And therefore, you know, we were on watch or, you know, looking for a pullback, which I still am. But if those divergences are negated, then they didn't pan out. And that's as simple as that. Uh, but until and unless, uh, you know, as long as these divergences are still in place, I should say, uh, my expectation is for a, a pullback, a correction in the market. Now, how far will it go? That'll be, that's the million dollar question. There's certainly been a lot of uh, increasingly bullish developments uh, with, with, you know, what's gone on in the markets in the last, uh, really since the Brexit you know, rally that we we started back here and, you know, the end of June, um, that, that really kind of set things off because it, it took us up above, take, it's taken quite a few indices to new highs, uh, and really took us above that trading range we've been in for the last couple of years. So that in itself is important, but, uh, again, there's, there's certainly a mixed bag of technicals in the charts. And all I'm trying to get at here is I think this next pullback when it comes, and I think even as, you know, bullish as anyone might be, yeah, we all know with as overbought as these markets are, uh, we're due for a pullback. There's no question about that. And then the million dollar question is, will we have a shallow pullback that gets bought up here at any of these support levels? I could add another support level here. Um, you can see I have numerous support levels on the chart. So I shared my thoughts. I think we're, you know, the queues will go down at least to test these prior highs back from June, as well as most of the other markets. But again, it'll be telling because as the next pullback begins to manifest, uh, those support levels, 
you know, if, if this is a new, if we just broke out of a two-year trading range and this market's going much higher, you would expect any pullbacks to be bought up sooner than expected. In other words, if you're looking, if all eyes are looking at, uh, let's say, uh, well, let's we'll just use the number I just mentioned here, 11070 for a target, pullback target on the queues, uh, then one would expect if there's just the supply dynamics have shifted and there's a lot more buyers in this market wanting to get in, you would expect this pullback to be bought up before we even make it down to 11070. Um, on the flip side, if we head down, we smash through 11070 like it's not even there, that it will be the first red flag that, hey, maybe something is amiss here. Um, maybe there is not, maybe the, the buyers have dried up in this market and there's a lot more sellers. And all those things I mentioned before, the dangerously low short interest, uh, extreme bullish sentiment and things like that, uh, those those may um, come home to roost in a, a pretty pretty powerful drop. So again, what I'm getting at here, guys, we'll just have to take it as it comes. I'm, I'm open to all possibilities. And, um, you know, if this market's heading higher, I will certainly do my best to out, you know, highlight some, some levels um, that look like objective areas to go long, to add long exposure, to add new, new long exposure, to cover shorts if you're short. And um, again, and keeping all possibilities open, uh, you know, we'll, we'll take a look at the nature of this pullback when it comes. How impulsive is it? How is the market acting at certain levels where the buyer should be stepping in? Um, because if we see those start to shatter, um, then it might be time to uh, either short if you're not short, trail down stops if you're short. In other words, hold out for maybe a much bigger move just in case those levels go um, or cover and uh, position long. So we'll, we'll get into that again as as the develop as the sell off begins to manis manifest and really shows its nature then uh, it'll help us formulate you know how much further we might drop or do we need to start preparing and getting long and, and you know hopefully the charts will start to firm up soon you know i've had quite a few unofficial setups i put on lately um, some some look better than others, but I'm still just not seeing some, the, you know, that the clean, very objective uh, trade setups with, with minimal downside risk and a lot more upside potential than I'm usually seeing. And that's why the trade ideas stay light. So, all right. So what do we have here on the queues? Uh, we have, we do have a breakdown. Um, you know, these trend lines have to be modified as, as prices move up. So, um, because there have been quite a few little whipsaw signals. So this this kind of breakdown, even though we're below that uh, trend line or this rising channel here, it's not impulsive. You know, you don't see a big red candlestick. You don't see a lot of volume. You did have one red bar, you know, towards the close yesterday, a little higher, but it doesn't look like really a solid breakdown yet. So I still have question marks here as far as that goes, but we're right there. Any more downside will clearly be below that channel. I'm doing this video. It's uh, 8.41 Eastern time as I speak. And the... Uh, Looks like the market's poised to open almost flat right now. And again, that's pretty much what I expect, uh, at least up until this afternoon when those minutes are released. Uh, so uh, there's the divergences. And, and as the notes, I've talked on this, put this chart up many times recently. I'm still waiting for these trend indicators to confirm that uh, 9 EMA crossing down below the zero line here, the dash line, uh, this 1333 EMA pair histogram crossing below, which is very close. Uh, you can see how well the Qs have been leading index. They usually are. Most of you know I put most of my emphasis on the Qs. And um, you can see not a single whipsaw signal on either of these trend indicators. They have not even come close to cross. I mean, they've come close. And that, that zero line is support unless broken. So it's not unusual to see test of that level. But you can see it going all the way back to the end of June. Um these have been bullish and uh, have not confirmed any sell signals that some of the others might have, have, have triggered. The SPY had a little whipsaw signal. While we're on the queues, let me focus on what I call the big five. They're just five that I'm looking at now. Um, those are Apple. I mentioned Apple before. And it's a 60 minute chart. Apple is the strongest of the pack right now. Uh, this is the uptrend line that I'm watching. You know, we had, uh, you know, exclude this called a flagging action, whatever you want. Uh, either way, this trend line has so many reactions, despite that unusually large whipsaw signal, I call it. Uh, there's so many reactions that I, I think of this trend line quite a bit of validity. 
And, uh, you know, we've, again, these are 60 minute charts. We pierce below. And this is one reason, again, why I watch five of the leading stocks, why I watch the Qs, why I watch the SPY, and, and don't just take any, you know, signals on just one of those index, indexes or any one of these stocks. I look at them collectively. Mm. Therefore, that, you know, that just shows this was a whipsaw signal because we didn't have uh, the Qs breaking down at the time. Um, but one, slowly but surely, these guys are breaking down. And you can see Apple is very extended now. The divergences are very clear, negative divergences, unmistakable negative divergences. And on any, you know, downside drop, let's say I put a horse on a level here, right there around 107.77. Uh, that should do the trick. That's horizontal support, mild support, and that would most likely bring these uh, trend indicators onto sell signals. Okay, that's, like I said, the best of the pack. Here's Google. Google's already broken down. Google, very well-defined trend line without any whipsaws. Um, we had a divergent high back here, and now we have confirmation. The trend indicators have flipped, albeit ever so slightly. But again, look how well they've they've worked in the past. We have to go back to late June um, to see these trend indicators at 9 EMA and the 1333 pair below the zero level. So uh, just like Apple and the QQQ, it's done a very good, these trend indicators have worked and they help to confirm these breakdowns in price or support. And so we have a clear breakdown. You can even see the impulsive move there. It broke, limped through and then had an impulsive move down and pretty much now you can look at a little bit of uh, resistance up there. Um, but uh, by by all means, by every metric on this chart, all the trend indicators and price, that one's broken down. There's Google. Um, let's look at Microsoft. <clears throat> Microsoft also broke down, back tested, and had this. These two lines were horizontal support level, which they it danced on. I think I pointed this one out the other day that we need to see that level go. And sure enough, we gap down below it. So this is technical analysis. This is how it works. You know, support, pretty pretty well-defined support zone, gap down right below it, and we've tested back underneath it. Every 60-minute candlestick sense has just danced right below there. Almost looks to be flagging, if you will, or a bearish pennant possibly. Uh, sell signals have also confirmed. So we're on uh, sell signals there on, on both these 60-minute trend indicators. Uh, so that's, what is that? At a, that's two out of three down so far. Now we have uh, three out of four down. This is Amazon. Nice, pretty well-defined trend line. Bearish rising wedge, divergent high, wedge breakdown. You can see the impulsive move following that wedge breakdown. And the stock has failed to even make a back test to recover. Looks to be rolling down. Trend indicators confirm they are now bearish. And then finally, uh, now we have four out of five. The four out of the big five I'm watching. Facebook broke down a while ago. Facebook, I had two alternative trend lines. I had this uptrend line here and the white trend line, both of which it's moved sort of limp down below. And again, this is more of a function. This, These are all the top components of the queues. And it's very unusual to see one of these get sold hard without the rest because it's just money moving in and out of the NASDAQ 100 for the most part. I mean, most of the... Uh, a lot of these are just indexed, if you will, because they're the, the big heavy weighted components of the, the NASDAQ 100. So when you start seeing the queues come under pressure, you'll probably see Facebook begin to really come down impulsively as well. So you can see the trend indicators are clearly bearish and have been uh, since uh, it looks like fri last Friday. So um, that's that. All right, so that's the... That's the Qs, including the top five that I'm watching. Here's the SPY, uh, S&P 500 tracking ETF. Most recently, I was watching this wedge pattern. We broke down. We've been moving lower. Uh, looks like we haven't triggered a, a sell signal yet on the on the trend indicators, but on any additional downside from here, because we're at, look at the reading is 0.08. Uh, you can see the histogram very close to crossing. The MACD is headed lower. Uh, the white line, that's what I wait for the second of the two, the 9 EMA to cross. And that should do so if there's uh, really any additional downside this week in the SPY. Uh, so close, but not there yet on both the SPY and the Q. And we'll just take a look at the other ones for those who would trade. Uh, these guys will follow. Uh, that I can all but guarantee you. If the large caps break down, meaning the SPY and the QQQ, you'll see the mid and small caps follow. That's what they do. 
So here's the MDY, which is the mid-cap ETF. There's an ascending price channel. It was a little whipsaw signal there. Came down, at, you know, not coincidentally, it back-tested that, that previous reaction high. And that would certainly be the first downside target. You can see now the MDY has cracked below that uh, ascending price channel, these two lines here. Uh, trend indicators have not flipped yet. They're close. Uh, I should clarify, we have a slight sell signal on the uh, 1333 histogram. See that one bar? That's why you have that 0 0.06 reading, but the uh, not confirmed yet on the MACD. And again, uh, I wouldn't do anything on the MDY. In other words, if I, let's say we had all these signals confirmed. We have the breakdown here, and let's say that, that uh, 9 EMA was below the zero line. Uh, I personally, I wouldn't short the MDY unless the Qs and the SPY also broke down, especially in this market. This this market um, over the last couple months, this uptrend has been about as resilient as, as any we've seen in quite a while. Therefore, you know, it's like I use the old, uh, you know, courtroom example, you know, in, in the U.S., you're innocent until proven guilty. And right now, uh, if you're looking at shorting, you better have a preponderance of evidence, you know, not just a breakdown in the MDY to enter short on the MDY. You better see the Qs and the SPY breakdown to confirm that uh, and, and maybe some of those big leading stocks that I mentioned as well. And when all those go and they look like they're slowly but surely going, it's like a Chinese water torture here, uh, that drip torture they call it. Um, it's just slow and steady grind up you know if you're long you're not making much money being long in the indexes what is this you know here we were back here at this point in the mdy and that was i'm just picking a high here back on july 13th so well over a month ago and where are we at today we're we're up 0 0.2 percent a quarter percent uh from where we were over a month ago uh, so that's just my point. The market's going nowhere. It won't go down, but it's not really going up. It's going up ever so slightly. And when these things happen, sooner or later, when this selling takes uh, comes uh, kicks in, when the correction kicks in, uh, my expectation will be pretty swift. That's how, what corrections do. Stock market corrections, stocks fall a lot faster than they rise typically. So it is not unusual. In my expectation, we will see uh, easily, easily a month of gains wiped out in a matter of days once this correction sets in. Uh, and that's, again, why I enjoy trading on the short side. I enjoy trading on the long side, but short side, you, you have to, your timing has to be good. Uh, you can't stay too late at the party, but if you get in, you can make very quick money in very short order. Get in, get out, and uh, that, that looks to be really right here on the horizon for us. All right, so there's IWM, same story as MDY. IWM's a small cap BTF. There's an ascending price channel. Uh, we're still well within there. Sell signals haven't triggered yet. We had that one little whipsaw back here I pointed out. Uh, so those are the indices, and we'll wrap this up. Take a look at, I want to look at the broad market. I want to go to a daily time frame and talk about these divergences again. Now, this sort of dovetails into what I started out in the video talking about, okay, when this correction sets in, we really need to be on our toes here because will this be, will this the correction when it comes be a uh, buying opportunity for run up to whatever I don't know so I've seen you know the targets it, it's it's ridiculous when the market gets starts going up then you start seeing these crazy high targets especially when it, it seems invincible like this um, so uh, let's just let's just assume another let's draw this out here well well goodness that's only four percent up to 20 20 well, I'd have to move this down more. Okay, let's say 2350. Let's say you think the market's going to 2350 and that is about a 20 a 7 almost an 8% yeah, almost an 8% climb from here. Uh, and if you get a pullback, obviously it would be more than that. It might be 10% or so. So, let's say that's what you're looking to trade, a pullback and I think an ideal target. I think anybody eyeballing this chart would just look at these previous highs back here, see in 2015, uh, you get the uh, quite a few highs. And we had almost another high there. So that would be an ideal, you know, buy zone right there. I can tell you right now, and I've already mentioned this. And I also said that from my experience, all eyes would be watching that level. And often retests of breakouts, 
they come back in a little bit below the breakout level so you might want to set your tar buy target there a little bit um, but on the flip side as I mentioned in the beginning if there is a voracious appetite for stocks right now and uh, the buyers come and step in early we, we're not going to get there because all eyes are going to be on that level I know that might be some confusing analysis. I don't know where this pullback is going to end. We'll have a good idea once it gets going. And based on what I see, I still think it's going to go more than that. I think it's going to go well below those highs. I think there's a potential in this right now, the potential for a flash crash type, you know, mini crash, very swift, these, this kind of move down. This is kind of built into the charts with ev with everything that's gone on lately for reasons I've already mentioned. Um, but most importantly, I've gone over this, you know, for, for months now, these divergent highs, you know, one, two, three. This is just the third divergent high. Yes, we had a divergent high here. No, we didn't have a correction. However, those divergences were not taken out. As you can see, looking at the RSI, looking at the MACD, they've continued to move lower, um, which only makes the correction when it comes, in my opinion, it will be a more powerful correction. So as I said recently, where, while I was bearish right here looking for a pullback, at this point now I'm looking for a, a, a pretty violent uh, or powerful sell-off. I shouldn't say violent, you know, just a pretty very swift drop. Now it might be something just like this or it could be something along the lines like this. We'll see. Um, but I just wanted to point out that those divergences, just because they haven't played out yet, uh, doesn't mean that they failed or don't work. Um, if, if, like I said, if we just consolidate here, move sideways without any pullback and move back up here, let's say to 2250, or I think I've heard 2300 thrown out there, um, and these divergences are taken out with a you know, higher high in the RSI and the MACD, then I was wrong. The divergences were wrong. They failed. They didn't play out. And as I often say, divergences in themselves are not a sell signal. So we're not short right now any market ETFs or anything like that. They're just a warning of an impending trend change. What triggers the entry are breaks of trend lines. You know, we have the 60-minute charts. You know, we can draw a little wedge there and then, you know, break below that wedge would be your sell signal. And this just helps guide us, well, how much of a pullback should we be looking for? All right, so we'll wrap this up. I told you I'd keep it short. Went a little bit longer than I wanted to, but uh, let's just take a look at the NASDAQ COMP. All right, here's the NASDAQ 100. I'm sorry, this is the NASDAQ composite. More, This is all the stocks in the NASDAQ composite here. Um, to me, this looks uncannily similar, these, these rips. You have this rip right here back in October of 2014. I'll measure it out for you. It's about 15, 16, about 16 and a half percent. And I'm using a log scale. So if I do this, draw a trend line from those points, from the from the bottom to the top, that gives me both the the time and the percentage gains. And again, using a log scale, it keeps a constant. So so this rip is very similar to that rip back that we had back there in 2015. You can see that. And um, probably need to draw right about there. There is the top. So you can see very close in both time, scope. You can look at the the RSI. Very rare to see the RSI. It's one thing to get above 70, but to get this much above 70 like we did here or stay, it, it's such an extended overbought reading. So that's exactly what happened here. We had extreme overbought readings right about the same level if you follow the horizontal line to the right. Um, from where I'm holding this. Um, so uh, we had a high level MACD. And what I noticed that's interesting is it, it's usually when you start seeing the MACD, especially at high levels, roll over and start coming down, you get a crossover here, like you had a bearish crossover where the blue line crossed the white line. Here, it looked like we were going to get that, and the MACD flattened out, and prices made another thrust higher from this point, keeping the MACD line you know, foiling, or I should say delaying the bearish crossover. These bearish crossovers are really good signals when you have, um, you know, extended separation in the MACD lines like this. Uh, it looked like we were going to get it there. We never got it. We had another thrust up. That's just a, last, a short clearing move. And you can see the MACD sort of bounced off the signal line. And then finally we crossed and there came the correction. Uh, and uh, we pushed back up, but for months stocks went nowhere, dropped, had another pop up and continued to drop 
and uh, that's about exactly what's happened here. You can see the MACD was curling over, looked like it was poised to make a bearish cross right here, flattened out the two lines of state above just like they did back here, and um, at this point it would just be extremely unusual to see the MACD at such high levels after the lines have already rolled over to turn around and move back up. So again, at the very least, we're looking for a correction. When you get a crossover on the daily MACD, you know, those are corrections good for, in this case, you know, the market didn't really bottom until, uh, what is that, you know, almost two months later. Um, you know, even at this point, that was about over two months later. Um, but even initially, we had that quick correction of about 5%, a very quick drop. And again, we may have something similar, you know, maybe a 3 5% drop. Uh, if, some, if we only drop 3% and we move back up and take out the highs, that's going to be extremely bullish. But uh, uh, just just be uh, on, on, on alert for anything because anything is possible at this point. And I'll draw a nice little support zone here. You see these two previous reaction highs right here. Uh, there's a gap back here. Uh, that would be a minimum target. So if you're bullish and want to go long... Um, there's the area you want to get long around 5,000 on the NASDAQ. And again, if the market falls short, reverses uh, from there, uh, that will just show a tremendous appetite for stocks right now. And when I say reverse, it's not going to go straight. It could go straight down. That is possible. Um, but there's probably be a, a couple of zigs and zags along the way. So, all right, let me wrap it up here. Um, video went longer than I thought, but I just want to get all my thoughts out there. I will be away from my desk uh, this morning. I have an appointment, uh, 9.30. I'll be back in around 10.30, 11-ish, and then I have to run out again for one other appointment in the afternoon. Uh, I'll make note of that in the trading room, but uh, I will be in and out late morning and uh, in and out throughout the afternoon today. This has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. Hope you enjoy.